It's me, Duty Boy! Welcome back to the Scoutcraft server. I'm having a fantastic day. Hope you are too. We need a villager trading hall to get better equipment and enchantments, but there's not much point in building one until we have plenty of goods to trade with farmers. We're getting plenty of iron from the iron farm I set up here, and we can trade all of that with smiths and armorers, but I'm gonna need a lot more crops. I know this looks like a lot, but you'll be surprised how quickly we'll trade all this to farmers for emeralds. So, today I'm going to build automatic villager powered farms where villagers farm the crops for me and dump them into a large sorted storage system and I'm going to show you how it's done. If you enjoy what you see today, please click the like button and help me show this to more people on YouTube. Location, 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 we need a good location. So, full disclosure, I'm planning to spend most of the season building a huge deep slate castle up on top of that snowy ridge up there next to that mountain off in the distance. So I want to start building my farms and trading halls near that location, which will one day be my base. I recently noticed these caves high up on the mountain there, so I thought I'd check them out and see if they might work. So how do I get up there? That's the question. I'll have to make myself a little bit nicer of a path if I'm going to be coming up here more often. All right, nice amounts of copper. And it's dark, but uh, there's not a lot of enemies in here. That's weird. Any down here? So, yeah, I mean, this is a pretty decent looking cave here. Wait, hang on a minute. There's a spawner back there. Holy cow, in my last episode, I just, oh, it, uh, oh, it's a spider spawner. Oh, geez. Okay, I gotta get over there and light it up. Oh, skelly. All right, let's light it up some more and then we can raid these chests. All right. Oh, a record. Uh, so this is 13. And golden horse armor and cat. I like it. Ooh, redstone. Gunpowder is always good. And we got some books. Impaling 2 and Sweeping Edge 1. All right, I'll take it. And another bucket? Why not? Ooh, check it out. There are some emeralds here in the mountain. That's awesome. So when I find emeralds like this, I actually don't mine them unless I mine them with a silk touch pickaxe. And then I uh, keep them. I basically just sort of hang on to them like rare ores. Yeah, yeah, I think we can kind of use this as my secret laboratory. Big bonus that there's like a uh, spider spawner over there. That'll be fantastic. I mean, because we're in order to convert our uh, villagers in our trading hall to zombies and back, we're going to need potions of weakness and potions of weakness are made with spider eyes. All right, should we go down here? Kind of looks like it's gonna be tough to get back out. All right, let's see. Whoa, looks like a great big cave down here. Holy Toledo, holy Toledo. All right, so that last cave would have been all right, but this cave is perfect. This cave is absolutely perfect. I just have to figure out a way to get up and down in here. I might need to go get some ladders. Yes, yes, this cave will do quite nicely. I should be able to fit all the farms I want into here and it'll be nice and covered up and I don't have to dig much out. Lots of copper too and some dripstone. Uh, there is another passage up here, so let's uh, quickly clear this out and light it up. Well, it had its run, but went pretty far back here and hey, I have just almost run out of torches, so that was kind of perfect. Looks like I'll need some more... Uh, coal in order to make some more torches, so I better start gathering some up. I've collected here in this chest all the items that we need to build these auto farms. There's an extra stack of dirt here just for pillaring up. I'm going to build three auto farms for wheat, carrots, and potatoes only. Uh, adding a fourth farm for beetroot would require vastly more materials. We're going to start with a combo carrot potato farm. Find a good starting spot in your space and pillar up nine blocks high. So it's a little dark up here at this height, but uh, go ahead and place down your first building block. Doesn't have to be cobblestone, can be any block. Then place uh, two temporary blocks to either side of it and place uh, two blocks on top of each of those. Now come back behind it on this side, away from the cave entrance side or uh, wherever you're gonna bring your rails from and bring a column of three blocks up behind each. I'm gonna go ahead and place a torch just so we can see. On this backside, place a fence gate down here and then let's place an oak trapdoor 
across the top. This will block in the villager from that side. And now we just got to get the villager into this side. Now we got to get a villager into place. I've run rails from the villager breeder outside up into the cave and down into here. When he gets to this activator rail, he'll be ejected from the cart onto this block and we'll do our very best to trap him here. All right, let's send one on his way. Okay, the villager is here and it looks like he's trapped there. So we're gonna have to take this out very carefully. We're gonna start by taking out uh, these rails from back here to just there. And we don't wanna take out that rail unless we take out the entire block. So I'm gonna use my shovel and uh, make sure he has no place to go. All right, so now he's trapped in there. Now we'll finish by placing two more columns of blocks to either side, a fence in the middle and another trap door up top. I'm gonna take this torch out of here and I'm actually gonna to put torches on either side, one block, two blocks down. We'll call this guy our hungry villager. The farmer villagers will try to toss food to the hungry villager, but we've blocked him off with fence posts and trap doors so the food will fall into the space below. From underneath, place a hopper in the middle and then two more to either side going into it. Place a temp block and then a double chest here and then another hopper going into it. Now place a row of blocks below the opening and then run a line of dirt blocks out from there. This should be nine blocks total right here and then you wanna come out four blocks to either side. Do the same close to the front here. Now just fill in all the dirt in the farming area. From the side, find the center block and count in five blocks. Take out this fifth block in the middle and replace it with a bottom half slab and a bucket of water. Place a composter on top of the water and a jack-o'-lantern on top of that. Surround the farming platform with walls so the villager can't jump off. Place torches in the middle of each wall and two on either side of the hungry villager. This lights things up in the farm enough to prevent spawns. However, over here in the corners, we've got a bit of a lighting problem, so you don't want to put any blocks here. Now build an identical chamber on the other side of the hungry villager. Time now to get two more villagers into each of the farms. Take down the wall on the side closest to your breeder and then run the rails directly onto the dirt. Send two more villagers from your breeder into the two farms one at a time. Then take out the rails, including the blocks outside the farm. Use a pickaxe to carefully knock the villager out of the minecart. Use F3 plus B to show their hitbox if needed. Quickly replace the walls. Do the same with the other villager. Now hoe the ground to make farmland and plant your crops. Plant only one type of food in each farm, either carrots or potatoes. When these crops grow up, the farmers will start harvesting and replanting them automatically. Once or twice a day, they'll move over to the hungry villager and throw food at him, but they'll be blocked and our storage system will collect the food instead. Now on this corner of the farm, I'm going to start an automatic wheat farm. The difference in a wheat farm is that we need a minecart running below the farm to pick up all the wheat. Because if a wheat farmer sees a hungry villager, he will make bread to feed them. We don't want that, so we have to use a different mechanic. Under this corner of the farm, we're going to place two temporary blocks down, a piece of cobblestone next to it, and then get rid of the temp blocks. Build an 11 by nine platform here. Then next to this corner block, place a temp block, take out the corner block and place a hopper going into the temp block and break it. Place a powered rail on top of the hopper, then blocks on two sides of it. Place temp blocks to the side and below it, more blocks below and outside those, and then place a jack-o'-lantern in between. Take out the temp blocks and place a comparator down here going into the jack-o'-lantern, a redstone torch behind it, and a repeater on top of it facing the rail. This is a cart unloading circuit. When a minecart with hopper passes over this hopper, the item will drain out. The comparator detects this activity and unpowers the redstone torch, the repeater, and the rail, holding the cart in place until it's empty. 
Then it will send it on its way again. Cover this platform with rails now, going up four blocks with regular rails, then a powered rail, then more rails to the end. Curve around and head back the other way, placing another powered rail in line with the first. Continue back and forth across the platform, placing regular and powered rails until you have this configuration. When you reach the end, place a powered rail and a block behind it. Underneath the platform, put a lever here under the last rail and flip it on. Then go to the middle and place more levers under each of the rails and power them all. Now build another 9x9 farm surrounded by walls like you did before. This time, surround the base of the jack-o'-lantern in the middle with four trapdoors and more trapdoors around those. This will keep the farmer from dumping his seeds in the composter. Now run your rail line from your breeder to the farm and send another villager to farm here. You'll need 80 weed seeds to plant the field and another 8 stacks to throw the farmer. He'll pick them all up. The idea is to fill his inventory with seeds so he can't pick up the weed he farms. A minecart with hopper will grab them instead. Now just place a minecart with hopper on the powered rail and it should take off. Finally, let's build a storage system under all these. That's why we built them nine blocks off the ground. Let's start by getting our rows of double chests in. I'm going to place the first one sideways directly in front of the temporary chest above. Then I'm going to place three more columns of chests here and raise them six high, which is comfortably reachable from the ground. Place hoppers behind every double chest going into the back. Now we're going to do the redstone. Behind this first hopper, run a line of three jack-o'-lanterns, three more underneath, one more below that, and knock out the center. Place a comparator behind this top hopper pointing out, shift click to place a hopper pointing into it, then place three redstone dust behind it, a repeater pointing this way, and a redstone torch in front of this jack-o'-lantern. I like using jack-o'-lanterns in my redstone because it negates the lighting changes. Minecraft has to recalculate the surrounding light every time redstone lights up, which can produce lag. With the area lighting already maxed out, Minecraft doesn't recalculate. Now just tile this same circuit behind every top hopper. To sort items, fill four of the spaces with one each of an item that usually stacks up to 64 and which is not output by the farm. If you're worried about sticks accidentally getting into the system for some reason, then you should rename these on an anvil. Then in the first slot, place 41 items and the sorting is all ready. I've set these first two to sort carrots and potatoes in the second two. Empty out and break the temporary chest, then place a hopper going into this last sorting hopper and connect the line back to the farm output. We're going to set up another system for the wheat farm, but only three columns of double chests this time. This last column we're not going to sort. This will be a catch-all for seeds. Instead of a sorting hopper in this row, I'm going to place a composter so that all the seeds output by this farm are converted but to bone meal. If I had beetroot on hand, I'd build another farm to this side, the same as the wheat farm with a minecart collection system. However, uh, the circuit output, since uh, for the wheat farm is on that side, I'd put the beetroots out here at this end and have it flow into another system from this side. If I do find beetroot though, I'll come back and expand. Now I'm gonna go AFK at this farm overnight and see how much the farmers produce. All right, folks, so I did attempt to go AFK here overnight. However, there was a server reset, which happens. I mean, these just things just kind of happen, but that's cool. Uh, so I did uh, log back in and go AFK for about four hours here about four and a half hours now so let's see what we've got in here all right looks like half a chest of carrots uh yeah like less than half a chest of potatoes and wow uh so it's not the most productive farm in the world we actually did really well on bone meal that's quite a bit of bone meal to be produced just from wheat seeds uh, so those are the results we got. Now that I've got tons of crops to trade with farmer villagers, we're about ready to build that villager trading hall. Since I just recently converted a skeleton spawner to an XP grinder in uh, the previous episode, I'll transform this spider spawner between episodes and show you the differences next time we see each other. Thanks for watching, and until next time, take care of yourself and stay alive.